Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. Uh, I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to encourage experienced painters to paint along with me. And today we're going to be working on borders and techniques with my very, very special guest. April. Yeah, Hi. my granddaughter, April Cardinal. And uh, April's been painting about two years and she's not really the kind that likes to paint a lot of flowers. So she's come up with a very unique um, technique that she was taught that works really well for her and it, it, you can use it for borders, you can use it for a lot of different things. April, show them some of the things you've painted with it so far. So this was actually a set that I gave to my mom for I do believe a birthday or Christmas and I can show you that. It's kind of like little flowers but it's not that hard. It's like abstract and then it also came with two cute little earrings. I don't know if you can see that well, but oh, that's okay. <laughs> I just it. dropped it. But the fun thing about this technique is that it is it has a mind of its own. So really, you never know what you're going to get with it. It's kind of tricky, but it really does pay off. So some of the things you're going to need if you want to do this, you're going to need some isopropyl alcohol. You're also going to need mineral oil. You want to have mineral oil on hand and mineral oil to mix your paints with. Um, you're going to need a spray bottle. And then just your regular China painting supplies. And April also uses a pipette, or you can even use a um, you can use a pipette, or you can use a dropper, um, or you can use Q-tips, which we're going to show how to use it with all three of those things today. Okay, so can you put it down? So, so I already have two different ways of doing this. One has slightly more mineral oil than the other which would be this one right here. And I didn't wipe the mineral oil off of my brush before I painted with my brush. And this one's kind of a little drier and it doesn't spread as easily, but this one you definitely get a bigger pattern. So I also have these two sections. I'm gonna show you three techniques in them because one of the techniques kind of looks like the other. So I just thought, what, what the heck? We're gonna do two sections. And she's not gonna be able to lift it up very easily after she does these. So you're gonna kind of have to watch very closely. So the first section I have here, I'm gonna do the blue section right up top. And I'm gonna go in with a pipette and then I'm also gonna show you how to do it with Q-tips. So first off, I'm gonna do this side with the pipette so you can see. So if I just drop this on, you're going to see a little bit of pattern starting to show up. And I'm going on pretty thickly because I don't really have a lot of uh, mineral spirits on this one. So it takes a little more while to progress. And it's, it's just so interesting to watch it because it kind of looks like coral or something growing. It's like a I'm science experiment. Um, I'm not going to do it in the brown because that one section is going to be for the spray bottle. Oh, okay. So we're just going to, I'm going to kind of tilt it a bit, see if I can get the pattern moving. It does it's take It's best a to do this when the paint is fresh, freshly put on. So it might be not as vibrant or as spready, spready, I like that word, um, as you would like it to be if you wait a little longer like I did, but I am starting to see a bit of a pattern there. Oh yeah. Really like this part right here. And I'm just gonna let that kind of grow and while well, I'm gonna do the next side, I think I'm gonna just put a little bit of mineral spirits on my- Mineral oil. Mineral oil on my brush. Just a tiny bit and a bit of fresh paint. See if I can make a bit more drastic change to the other side. Uh, it's a little wavy. A little bit more mineral oil. Okay, so this side I'm going to do with a Q-tip. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your Q-tip into your isopropyl alcohol or your rubbing alcohol. And you're just going to gently set it on the piece and you can do this a few times and this one is the one that creates more of the flowers so the last one was kind of like coral is what i'm going to say this one's more like flowers they kind of branch out and grow just like the coral and uh oh that's pretty yeah this it's was, more controlled too isn't it? it is more controlled definitely um, here, I'll hold it up so you guys can see. Now, I only did a few. Um, normally, I would pack a few more in, but right here are my flowers. 
Now over here, I put more mineral spirits than over here because that's where my brush started off and that's where the most of the pigment and mineral spirits that I freshly put on uh, the mineral oil, up. right? Yeah. Mineral oil. Guys, if I say mineral spirits, I'm sorry. I do mean mineral oil. Yeah. Um, and it's creating much of a bigger pattern, larger pattern over here than it is over here because obviously, like I said, there was more mineral oil on that side. Okay. So next off, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to actually use a spray bottle. And it's filled with? It's filled with uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. And this might get on my other sections, but since I already showed you, I'm not that worried about it. If you are looking for more of a controlled environment on um, where you're spraying it, I would definitely do this first and tape off all other sections of your piece. So, oh, I have a fingerprint there, but that's not that too important. I'm just gonna spritz real lightly. And how far away do you hold it? I would say like maybe eight inches, but I'm doing a little closer than eight inches. But just um, spray it as many times as you think is necessary. And you get a really cool like bubble effect. So this would be really good for say a plate that you were doing waves with and you want to do mist or something of the sorts. Maybe underwater and you want to give a fish little tiny bubbles. Just something of that sort. Um, I'm going to be doing it. Uh, it's a terpenoid technique. It actually is a marbleizing technique. And I think that um, it's something that um, it's pretty easy to do, and it's also fun. Kids can do this too. This is something that I painted a while ago, and this is just a regular tile. I taped off a border on it um, and then painted something in the middle, but this is the technique around the edges. Okay, so um, this is what we're going to do, and it's, it's a really simple technique. Um, do you say a beginner could do this? Yeah, I think a beginner could do this. You just have to be able to blow through a straw, so it shouldn't be hard. But you need terpenoid. Now, this is, it's T-U-R-P-E-N-O-I-D. And I think you can buy this at, um, at you know, some, some supply, um, art supply places. It's for brush cleaning. So I'm going to um, start by putting paint on. Now, I've already done a little bit, you can see here. Okay, so you're going to paint on here, and you're going to paint just blobs of color. And you can pick any colors you want. And you're gonna paint them darkly, but not thickly. So you want them to be dark, but not too thick on here. Um, because you wanna, and you can, you can blend them if you want, but I wouldn't because some of this Technique, the cool thing about it is it kind of helps you blend. Now, let me warn you about terpen terpenoid. Terpenoid has a smell that um, you probably want to keep the windows open. My grandma didn't one day, and uh, I smelt it all day. My mom couldn't even be in the house. It kind of uh, it stunk up the place. So I'm taking a dropper now, and I'm just going to drop a little bit here and there. I'm going to work on a small section at a time, and I'm going to take a straw. I have these from, these are Ikea straws, they have, or McDonald's, they have the really big opening, and blow. Okay. And then you turn it and you can blow back the other way. And then you can put a few more drops on. The quicker you start blowing, the less likely you are to get these little dots. You can, you can turn it so it runs. I think pretty much anybody could do it. And then when you've let it set for a while. If you need more, you can add more and just keep doing it.
Just what you wanted to do, stand and watch me blow on a straw all day, huh? Okay. And as the turpenoid loosens up the paint, because I put some of this paint on there a while ago, you'll see it gets more and more wavy and easy to move around. So that just gives you an idea. You can get a real interesting effect with that. Okay, I sprayed out all the alcohol from this, and I'm just going to... I'm going to put it in with my turpenoid, and I'm going to try spraying it. Up, I don't know if you can see it there. i got to move it back. Better? There. Okay. It takes a little while to get up there. Oops. Ooh. You know what? I think I like the spray technique better. It works really easy. It does need to move after it's sprayed. Yeah, if it, if it sits up too long, you're going to have a problem with it. But you, as you can see, I'm moving it, and it's, it's moving pretty well. So the smell is getting to my daughter. <laughs> She's opening the window. But there you go. So that, that is the terpenoid technique. And you can really get a cool kind of a marbleized look to it on the outside. Now my turpenoid has changed color because it's been in this tin for a while. So I, I imagine it's a little clearer probably normally when it comes out, but this one is kind of a, a brown color, but as it dries, it disappears. So you don't have to worry about that. And if you get a lot of little glops, like here's a good example. You can take, um, uh, you know, um, one of your sponges and just touch the edges. If you don't want those blobs, and that will kind of also help, I think, even things out. So, well, everybody had good ideas on that. I guess it's something that you've tried, but luckily this is something that anybody could do. I'm going to put all of the techniques in a borders um, or borders and technique uh, free printable because I got all these from people that I have painted with over the years and they never charged to show me, so I'm going to put it as a free printable. And I'm going to show you the feather technique. Oh, before I do, look at how cool this dried. That's really cool. Okay, so that's out of the way, and we're going to use we're going to use the feather technique. Now I use the feather technique on here uh, around the edges. This this edge, this edge, and this edge. And it's very very simple. I mean, it couldn't be simpler. The other thing that I did on this was these are metallic paints. So you can use the metallic paints, um, and we'll talk about that by just taping off an area. So um, that just gives you an idea of what that's gonna look like. Okay, so I have my tile here. I didn't tape anything off on the tile, and I have my feathers. These are not the best feathers to use. But um, this is a technique that is so simple, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, you basically just take a, exactly what it sounds like, a feather, and you can use, I think, the feather also for a marbleizing technique. You can kind of wind it through things um, if you have paint on there with a different color to give you a marble technique, but right now we're just going to talk about, I'm going to put some red on, on my palette. Okay, and I'm going to put, April had pretty good luck with mineral spirits because it keeps it really oily, and that's what I need. So I'm mineral oil, so I'm going to try the mineral oil in my paint, even though I mixed my paint originally with mineral oil. Okay, and you just take your, your feather, and you... I'm going to have to get a little more color there. Yeah, we're painting with a feather. Okay. And you drag it through the color, and then you drag it across your piece. And I have found that sometimes it's better to even use the feather as a, here we go, dip it right in the oil and go for it, you know, because sometimes that works the best so you can see it. But here we go. And you're going to do crosshatch. The best feathers for this, I think, would be the kind, and I thought I had ordered that, but I hadn't, um, would be the kind that you get the kids put in their old, um, um, you know, like Indian caps or something, and you just go back and forth, crisscrossing and hatching it, and you can get a pretty cool effect. 
the one I showed you, unfortunately, I did it at, at a, our, we did it at our um, state meeting, and I transported it home, but I didn't want to take it off, and so I did fire it, and it's got a few smudges on it, but it turned out pretty good. So there you go. That's another technique that you could use, and it's done just with a feather, and I ended up dipping the feather in the mineral oil and then in the paint, just like as if it were a brush, and I think I get a better technique with that. Like I said, oh, do you have the tile? Mm-hmm. You can show all of them. Yeah, so this is what it will come out like around the edge, this kind of a pattern. And there it is, just painted. Okay. So that's another technique that you can use. Now, we did one already, and I don't even know if you realized it, but back in the fall when we did this fall plate, that's another technique that you can use. We do it with yellow and, you know, yellow and green and all the fall colors and you put them all on here and then you go outside and you get leaves that are fresh leaves because if you have a curved surface like this you're, or even if you have a border like this on your plate around the edge it's still a little curved and you just after you let it set up for a couple of seconds just so it's not real runny you press your leaf into it and you you push around the whole leaf to make sure that it's left an imprint and then you lift it off and then you get this effect and if any of your leaves don't look the way you want them to you can take your brush or your liner and simply touch up the edges maybe pull out a few of the edges that you need to or what have you and that will give you a beautiful border as well so there's another idea for a border or you can use it for the fall plate and do the stenciling on it the last um, one that I wanted to do with you is the powdered sugar technique. Um, a lot of you probably have painted with sugar water in the, fat, in the past, and this is just another way of using it. This is how it comes out, and I had to play with this one because I didn't know how well it would actually work. And I had taped off this mug. Actually, my granddaughter had taped off this mug. She was going to paint it, and I found it, and I thought, this is perfect. And if I hold this close, you can see it's a built-up texture on there. It's really a nice texture. And if you run your hand across it, you can feel the texture. And the way we get the texture is by using, now you can use creamer, powdered creamer, or you can use powdered sugar which I have in the house. I don't have powdered creamer in the house. I use a spoon. Okay, you need paint. Um, you're also going to need a medium. You're gonna need some water. And this is the water that I have to work on with this. Water, you say, how odd is that? But this is water. So we have the powdered sugar, the water, um, and you're gonna use dry china paint with it. So the first thing I'm going to do, is there a spoon on the, oh, here it is, okay. Is I'm gonna take my spoon and I would use a plastic spoon or something. I wouldn't use a real spoon for this. Um, and I'm going to take a, a, a portion of my paint and just put it out here on my palette. And you're gonna mix equal parts of paint to sugar, to powdered sugar or powdered creamer. And I understand the powdered creamer works better, but I didn't have any problems with the sugar. so. If you've never tried the sugar, I guess you should. So this is how much I put on here. Let me just show you. I just put Tiny that bit. much. Yeah, about a thumbnail size. Um, only because I don't want to mix up a whole lot of this. But you need to mix up enough to do the piece you're going to work on. Because if you don't, um, it's going to change colors the next time because you won't have as much powdered sugar with it. So... And if you add more water to extend it, it's gonna change the color and make it lighter too. So I have the two colors here on my tile. I have the, the powdered sugar, I put it right on top. And now I'm gonna take my palette knife. Right here. Thank you. And I'm gonna start mixing the, oh, hang on, this palette knife has other colors on. I'm gonna start mixing the colors together and getting all the lumps out of the powdered sugar. Just do it dry because that way it, I think it works a little better. Then you can add your water to it. You're going to add enough water to make it almost like a thin ink. Okay, so there I've got it mixed. 
going to take my eyedropper and add my water. Oops. <laughs> Air. Helps to have some water in there. And I'm just going to add a little water. And then I'm going to mix it up so it's real runny. And the reason you want it, well, not this runny. This is a little too runny, We're gonna, <laughs> but it, it will dry quickly. So I'm just going to leave it like this and give it a, a couple of seconds and it will dry. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to put it on the edge of this plate. This is the plate I'm working with. So um, in order to do that, for this application, I'm going to use saran wrap. Now you can use saran wrap uh, a number of different ways. You could do like I did on that marbleizing. I'm about a 12 by 12 inch sheet is what I'm going to tear off. You could, uh, and I'm wadding it up, and you could use um, this, the saran wrap on that marbleizing. Um, you could just paint your colors on and then take saran wrap and use it over regular paint. But this gives you a texture, and that's the reason I'm using this combination with the water. So I'm just dipping it in. Oh, I'm sorry. And first I'm going to paint it on. Oh, this has orange in it. Or red. Okay. I'll use this brush. I'm going to paint it on the edge. Oh, it's not working real well. You need more powder sugar? I don't think so. Maybe. Okay, hang on. Let me add more paint and powdered sugar. Apparently, I did water it down a little too much. There we go. Powdered sugar and a little paint. Always fun to do this stuff live. You never know what you're going to get. Okay. And we'll mix it again. Ooh, now it's really gooky. This should work fine. Yeah, it was my fault. I just, I thinned it out too much. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to paint it on this piece. And you can see now it's going on much, much better. Now, the, the, pro, the secret with this is you do have to let it dry and you can't have any oil in your brush. Your brush has to be totally oilless. And I think this brush has a little oil in it, but we'll pretend it doesn't. And I'm just painting it on real thick. All around the edge. There's no secret to this. Anybody can do this. A beginner could do this and get a really nice edge on a piece. And if you want to clean this up, let's say I mess it up like I just did right there. Um, you're going to take a Q-tip dipped in water and it will come right off. So don't worry too much. If you can't tape the edges, if you can, that's even better because that keeps you from going over the edge. But I'm not going to keep this, so I'm. this is just a demonstration piece, so I'm just um, painting it on. Now, I have enough, obviously, to do the whole piece, so I'm just going to touch up a few spots where it thinned out. Okay. And you'll have to clean the brush with soap and water because the brush now has um, water and sugar in it. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit. This side's drying very quickly. Woo! And I'm going to take my wadded up paper, uh, wadded up saran wrap. Make sure it's really well wadded. And I'm going to start, I'm going to have to do it down here. I was hoping I could do it up above. Let me move myself back so you can see me. I'm going to start. Hold the plate, and I'm just going to do this around the edge. You're just pouncing. I'm pouncing up and down. Thank you, April, yes. And I'm going to change the spot on here that I'm using, only because I don't want to keep getting more and more paint on it. Okay, and that's what I've gotten done so far. It kind of looks a little bit like foliage. Yeah, it does, and it also reminds me of the stuff we used to do back in the 60s with the sponge painting a little bit. It kind of has that look, but it's a textured look. It's a little different. It's now, like what you see in a blurred like, camera view where you have like the really crisp up-close leaves, and then you have that in the background, kind of like yeah. shadows. 
and you just keep going over it. And I find the harder you press, the more you take off. It makes perfect sense. So if you find a spot where you can't get the paint off, if you press a little harder, you will get the paint off. And this is how it comes out. Okay, now we're going to let this dry. But in the meantime, I have a Q-tip with some water, and I just want to show you. You can go around and clean up whatever you don't want. With a Q-tip and a little water, you can just remove it. It comes off very easily because it's just water and sugar right now. Although it sets up and it gets very hard. Okay. So there's the water and sugar, and I just removed what I didn't want, so it's not right on the plate, obviously. I'd do a better job if this is something I'm keeping, but I'm not. So that's how it turns out. And now, at, once it's dry, you're going to take another brush that doesn't have any sugar in it. You're going to take some oil, a generous amount of oil. You're going to dip it in your oil, and I, you can't see it there, so I'm going to bring it over here. You're going to dip it in your oil once, wipe it once, and then you're going to start gently putting the oil over the top of your paint. And the reason you do this is so that when you put it in the kiln, it will adhere to the plate. And I go all the way around doing that. I think what I will do is I will put these out there uh, for you with samples of how they turned out so you can see them and try them. Your hands will get really sticky. And the other thing is when I did this cup, I turned it upside down to dry it, and I noticed that overnight the oil dripped down, so I had to go through and remove the oil. But what I kind of oil do you use? What kind of oil? It's your regular painting medium. I have the medium plus that I get from um, Dallas, China, but everybody who uh, is a teacher pretty much sells their own. Um, so this is how it turned out once I got the oil on. And you can see it doesn't look much different, and the paint did not lift. Isn't that amazing? You would think it would because it was water, but it didn't lift. So, oh, great. Okay. Alrighty, so I think that's it for this week. I will have uh, a free printable um, available with just these techniques that we did today um, online. And uh, my special guest, I, April I don't know what age did I start painting? Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was a while ago. A few years ago. I yeah. think you probably started when you were around 10 or 11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was the youngest China painter in our state at the time she started. Lisa. And so please stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.